Hey guys, Ariel over here at Fineth, and today I want to share with you a really simple and very effective um, do-it-yourself mosquito repellent. This I can't take the credit with coming up for. I don't know who did. I saw it from a link somebody shared years ago online somewhere, and I've seen it lots of places since. So I don't know who actually came up with this, but it wasn't me. It involves three simple ingredients. Epsom salt, which you should probably already have in your house for one thing or another. Some kind of mint flavored mouthwash. I just brought the cheapest store brand. As you probably know from my tooth care video, you know that I don't actually use a Listerine mouthwash like style like this in my mouth ever, but I do buy it occasionally once a year to make mosquito repellent. And then stale beer. Any kind of beer works. This is a Coors Light. I personally don't like beer. I think it tastes and smells like rotting compost, and I love compost in my garden, but I don't like beer. But every now and then I have friends who come over for a dinner party and somebody will bring beers and a couple get left here, and since I don't like them, they end up stale, and they work great for this. As far as I know, you can buy the cheapest possible beer out there, and it might work great fresh too. I don't even know that it has to be stale. Let me grab a funnel so that I don't make a gigantic mess here. I've got a little reused, recycled spray bottle here from some kind of cleaner somebody else had, not me because I don't use them. And I'm going to use it as my sprayer bottle. Now the original recipe I've seen for this, um, it mixes up a pretty large batch and I just don't usually need that much at once. So if you are not new to my channel, you can probably know how I um, very accurately measure everything. That is being sarcastic. I don't measure anything, and so I'm not measuring this either. But approximate proportions are about one beer to about one cup of Epsom salt to, I've seen one bottle of mouthwash, but obviously mouthwash comes in quite a few bottle sizes, so I don't know exactly what that means. So I'm gonna do about equal proportions of beer and Epsom salt in here pretty foamy. Probably see, let's see, oh, there's no, there's no real gap in that label to let you see the whole way through. That was like half that beer, so I will be able to mix up another spray bottle full in a minute. You could obviously make a, a bigger batch of this and put it in a gallon jug or something and then have, um, plenty left to keep refilling your bottle. I'm just not taking the time to do that. Since that beer is so foamy, I'm going to put this on for just a second. You can kind of get my Epsom salt dissolving there. You can hear it um, shaking, so I know it's not dissolved yet. That knocked down a little bit of my foam, so now I can pour my mouthwash in. This stuff really does work. This doesn't go on you. It goes on your objects around where you're trying to keep mosquitoes away, like your porch, your deck, your chairs, your fire pit, your swing, um, wherever you don't want mosquitoes to be. As to why it works, I don't actually know. I'm sure you could look up more scientific info on what about this combination repels mosquitoes. But what I'm going to do out is in just a minute here, I'm going to show you boil my jar over here. Let's do another shake round. Um, is that I just spray it on everything. And this stuff lasts for two, two and a half months. So I only do this once per summer. Normally I do it a little before this, but we've had so much rain. I didn't want to, well, I wasn't outside anyway that much um, hanging out because of the rain and didn't want it to all get washed right off. Though it does seem to stick on through some rains. I can already hear a lot less salt shaking when I do that. So I know that it's starting to dissolve. Just want to fill this clear up. Um, I, the only thing with the mouthwash is that I have read you should make it sure it's some kind of a mint flavored one, which it seems like the vast majority of them are. Um, yeah, boiled it over. Bubbled it over. Whatever you would call that. Um, because bugs don't like peppermint. I also use peppermint oil around the, usually once in the spring for a couple weeks, I get these, those little tiny, tiny black ants that try to come in my house. It's really the only bug problem I've ever had inside. I don't know where they come in, but if I put peppermint oil around the kitchen sink, they go away again. 
just another little tip that you might give a try to. Okay, so I'm gonna call that bottle full. I'm gonna give this just a minute to finish dissolving, and then I'm going to show you where I put this outside. But this doesn't, it seems to repel actually a lot of bugs, not just mosquitoes, but it's definitely very effective for mosquitoes. And I am not sure whether it would repel things like bees that I do want or not, but I'm not putting it anywhere that my bees would be. There's no flowers right on my porch step, and so I, there's no reason for bees to be there, and so I'm going to spray there. There's no reason to, for a honeybee to be on my swing where I'm going to hang out by the fire pit, and so I'm going to put it there and so on. So I don't mind if bugs are completely repelled from the areas where I am putting this. And I've got to say, guys, this stuff really does work. I've done this for several years, and I can hang out by my fire pit at night, um, and you will occasionally still see a mosquito, that's true, but I might see, like, one, and one of my closest neighbors, which is still a little bit up the road. Um, if you go sit on their porch, uh, at the same time, you get hundreds of mosquitoes. I'm actually going to mix up a second bottle and go spray down their porch just for them when I'm done here. But... It, it really does seem effective, and I usually only apply it once a summer. Now, if you have a little longer summer than mine, you might want to do this twice in a year. You know, like a, a spring and then a summer application that'll last through the fall. But it should be good for a couple months once you put it on. I can still see when I let it settle that I've got a little bit of Epsom salt settling out there. So we're going to give this just a minute, and I'm going to go outside. Okay, so the light's a little harsh because the sun is bright and shining today. But I'm outside, this is my main hangout area when I'm at, not working in the garden or something. And as I pointed out, there's no um, veggies, there's no flowers, there's nothing I care about being pollinated here, so I don't mind if bugs just totally avoid this area. I guess there's one dandelion in the yard there, but I'm not too concerned about that. So then I just take this and I spray it all around on everything. The ground, the chairs, the swing, the frame, the cushions my little um, log end tables, the rocks of the fire pit, and the mosquitoes seem to just avoid the entire area for pretty much the whole summer. I've never had a problem at all with this making any kind of stain on fabric, but if you've got something you're you know, a fabric cushion that you're um, worried about that, it might not be a bad idea to test it on a little spot first. But I just spray everything. And I'm not worried at all about being breezy and the stuff kind of drifting around because I just want it to stick a little bit to everything in the whole area so you can hang out in this general spot and not be bitten up by mosquitoes. And then once I'm pretty sure I've got everything spritzed down a few times, I've usually got just a little bit left in the bottle. I'll just kind of let it soak in a couple places on my little log tops just because I don't really have any other good use for the rest of it. Or uh, on the lo uh, rocks. You know, things like that. Just to use up the rest of the bottle because I'm going to mix up a fresh batch next year. So that's that. I'm going to rinse this spray out because the with that amount of Epsom salt in there, it's going to get a little crusty if I don't. And then it would might be hard to get spraying the next time. So that's that. I should have a pretty bug-free area for the rest of the year. Give it a try and let me guys... Uh, give it a try and let me know what your favorite uh, ways are to be able to enjoy the outdoors without getting eaten up by bugs. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, 
click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.